Okay, so uh, what we have to do uh, is to understand training binary neural networks. So before we get to training binary neural networks, which was a case of simple um, uh, quantization of your training, let's remember what was training. I mean, uh, at this point, I'm going to repeat what I've said previously. If you have not taken the previous semester's course, Convolutional Neural Networks, EE 541, well, it will be difficult for you to understand this part because we spent two weeks for training in the previous course, but we have spent enough time here, so with a bit of an effort, you might get to understand what training is, but you have to understand training in order to implement certain parts of um, embedded deep learning, guys, because embedded deep learning is all about embedding also the training uh, part, not only the inference. Okay, so the, it, at the heart of the training of neural networks, we had something called the back propagation. It was short for backward propagation of errors. I mean, what we back propagated was the error, the loss. It was actually, since we have used an algorithm called gradient descent, we were back propagating the gradient of the error. So how much the error changed affect how we've changed or updated the waves during our training. So given an artificial neural network or a deep neural network, which are the same class, you need an error function. And that error function, actually in supervised learning, but we, this is what we cover, relates to, it, well, it doesn't have to be supervised learning. You define an error function without any ground truth then. So when you have supervised, uh, when you are doing supervised learning, you have a ground truth, which means for each training data, you know what the output should be. But uh, instead of the what the output should be, you get a value. So between them, the targets, there's an error. So you calculate the loss, how far you are from the actual ground truth. Depending on the value of that loss, you take the partial derivatives of that loss to each parameter in each layer. So at this point, this is the output, this is the loss. You get the partial derivative of the loss according to the output. So you, using chain rule, you back propagate this error. So at this layer, you have this delta L or delta Z. So using this, you calculate delta L over delta omega, which is the derivative of the loss according to the parameters of this layer. So using this, well, if the loss and the uh, differential relation with, of the loss with the parameters is something, I update it using this value. So this, this is a part of the optimization. I strongly recommend you visit the previous year's slides or study back propagation. In the previous week's slides, also I've provided very useful links to understanding training in neural networks. So what you must understand is, Actually, basically, what is backpropagation and what is gradient descent and how the weights are optimized. So, when we are doing quantization aware training, we are embedding the binarization job within this backpropagation algorithm. And with quantization aware training, all weights and actuations are actually fake quantized. We, uh, we quantize them, actually, we make them as if they are quantized, but we push quantization at each iteration so that the resulting network will be quantized and trained. So we do this in both forward and backward phases of training. So float values are rounded to mimic, for example, int 8 values when you are doing 8-bit precision quantization of your training. In our case, we'll be doing single-bit precision. So it was an example of any quantization of training is quantization of training. In this case, we are doing single bit quantization of training. So when you do this, this is the best you can get. This generally gives the least accuracy drop compared to other techniques like post quantization techniques. We have covered these in the previous weeks, guys. So how to do it? So what we are going to do is we are going to add a binary quantization layer to training. So these are the weights. So we are adding binary quantization layer. Well, we'll be binarizing these weights as well, but we will need to binarize the actuations. So when you add a layer, what you need is, you, will, you should be able to calculate the analytical gradient of it. So you have to calculate delta L over delta Z. 
if you know that because the forward operation is signum, you are binarizing it using, with, using the deterministic function. So with signum function, you have z, the output is signum z. You know the forward function. So the backward function is the derivative of this guy according to this guy, which is delta L over delta z. Well, we need to find this. What is delta L over delta z for signum function, which is the derivative of this function? Well, let's think about it. Sine function's gradient is zero, guys. This is the sine function. At only this point, there is a change. Other than these points, it's all zero, guys. The derivative of sine function is zero almost everywhere, making it apparently incompatible with backpropagation. Why incompatible? Because we are multiplying these derivatives according to the chain rule in backpropagation. And at this point, all derivatives become zero. It is like you forward feed something, then you start training, and at this point, you start with a loss, you multiply the loss with zero at this uh, layer, and all the loss gradient is lost. Gradient vanishes. When the gradient vanishes in training, learning vanishes. We have discussed these in the previous semester's class. So we don't want this to happen. So if you use signum, and if you use the analytical gradient of the signum, you stop learning. So instead of using the analytical gradient of signum, you must use something else which doesn't vanish, which doesn't make the gradients vanish, which doesn't kill the gradients. Well, but the analytical gradient of a signal is uh, zero. So what can we do? Are we going to use another function? Actually, we are going to pull a trick. We are going to be using the same forward function, but for the backward function, we are going to use a, another formula. It's going to be strange, but let's see what we do. So forward pass of weights is this. Backward pass of gradients will be something different. Why? Because the exact gradient of the cost would, would be zero if we don't use do this. Well, even if we use stochastic quantization, which we don't, you remember this was the gradient, it was the stochastic gradient, it is still zero for mostly, most part, part of the spectrum. So whatever binarization you use, you cannot use the exact analytical gradient. So in 2013, these guys, again, thank you, one of the gods of deep learning, they studied this question and they realized that when they put threshold functions like signums as layers inside the neural network, their gradients are zero. So what should we do? They have come up with an idea. They said that instead of using the gradient of signum, let's use an estimator for that gradient, which is Specifically, straight through estimator. Well, estimator, well, instead of the actual gradient, using an estimator. What does this mean? I don't know what an estimator is. Let's see what an estimator is. 